to see. Superstition be hanged. gentlemen, and you are about to witness it for the first time. So all eyes attention. I give you, high in the tent top, that supreme artist who refuses to use a net, the better to entertain you, Flyer Samson. <laughs> Yeah, Ruby. Do you think he'll make it? Flyer? Yeah, you can't miss. He missed twice yesterday. Yeah, that was before he found his trouble. Did eight in a row after he got the hang of it. Barker, don't say that. What, Ruby? The, the hang of it. Oh. You remember what Harajala said? Yeah. Is Flyer wearing the white feather? I can't see. Well, he pins it at the belt on the left side. Yeah. Well, his left side's away from us. Anyway, his suit's so white we couldn't tell. Where's yours? Huh? Where's your feather? Yes. Inside in, inside my ring jacket. Here, see. Yeah. yeah. That was a clever stunt, keeping your feather in your hair. Yeah, it, it adds to my costume. Oh, he's getting ready. Oh, I hope he makes it. He will. He missed twice yesterday. Yeah, but he hadn't gotten the hang... Uh, hadn't gotten the idea yet. And he used a net yesterday. We should use a net till he's sure. Ah, oh, he's sure. Now, ready now. Watch. Get with a giant swing on that stationary bar. Let loose. Fly through the air in a two and a half somersault. Catch that swinging trapeze bar at the other end of the tent. I know. Why do? Haven't I watched him practice for weeks? Yeah, the trick is to catch that swinging trapeze at the other end of the tent. Oh, I hope he's wearing that feather. Here he goes. There's the giant swing. Once. Twice. Three. Four, five, he's in the air. Grab that bar! Oh, flyer! Good Lord, what's happened? Look at him! Look at him! I told him to wear the white feather with the spot of blood. And a jolla. He is wearing the feather. And I told him to. Now look at him. Hanging there. Caught in the twisted trapeze rope. Hanging. Excuse me. 
Excuse me. Oh, Ruby. Barker, the feather. I couldn't find it in Plyer's dressing room. Ruby. Oh. Come in, Miss... Uh... Ruby? I take it you're talking about the dead man's dressing room? Why, yes. Uh-huh. Thought so. Excuse me, please. Murphy! Cover Samson's dressing room. Nobody in or out. Right. Now, Miss Ruby, suppose you tell me about the white feather. Ruby? Police Inspector Guilfoyle. Inspector, this is Ruby Brooks. Well, Ruby Brooks. I must say, you don't look a bit like your pictures on the billboards. All right, wise guy. I don't have to stick around here and be insulted. I know my rights. Insulted? <laughs> my dear girl, what I meant was you're so much more attractive than those horrible posters they have up all over town. Honestly. Ah, stow it. Parker, what's a copper doing in here? Just asking questions, Ruby. Routine stuff, you know. Be nice to him. Sure, Ruby. That's not a bad idea. What do you want? Just checking up. We run a pretty respectable town here. And we run a pretty respectable circus, mister. <laughs> I'm sure you do. Except every now and then, somebody winds up in a casket. Meaning what? Oh, nothing. You're trying to make something out of Flyer Sampson's death? Nothing more than it really is. Well, he died by accident, see? And if you want some witnesses, brother, just advertise for any one of those 1,100 people who saw him die. They tell me Flyer Sampson was a first-rate acrobat. He's the best in the business. I mean, he was. They also tell me he was trying out a new trick today. Yeah, new on the public. He's been working on it for two years. And I also understand today's the first time he's tried it without a net. So what if it is? Strange, isn't it, that a man should die trying his new stunt for the first time? I don't see anything so strange about it. No? You use a net for your trapeze act, don't you? got to do with it. Well, I was just thinking. Flyer Sampson not using a net and perfecting a stunt nobody had ever done before was liable to put out your spotlight, huh? Now, look here, wise guy. If you're insinuating Ruby. that... Now, take it easy, baby. Take it easy. I wasn't insinuating anything, Ruby. I was merely telling you what I was thinking. Now, Barker... Yeah? What's your real name? Jeff Kilby. People in the business call me Barker Kilby. And the young lady? She's my wife. I see. I presume you performed as usual today, Mrs. Kilby? Naturally. I have the high spot of the program. <laughs> I'm afraid I rather disagree with you. The high spot seems to have gone today to Flyer Sampson. Now, about the white feather. Well? Barker, do we have to put up with this? After all, Flyer wasn't murdered. Are you positive he wasn't murdered? Of course I am. It was an accident. Ask anybody who saw it. Then what's the white feather got to do with it? Nothing. Nothing at all. Suppose you let me decide. I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, you do, Ruby. Remember? The first thing you said when you come in here was... You couldn't find the white feather in Flyer's dressing room. Uh, I don't remember. <laughs> A very bad memory. And why, Ruby, if you're Barker's wife, did you knock before coming in here? Oh, yeah. Just a habit. You've only been married two days. I understand, Mr. Kilby. You've been married two years. You see, before I investigate a case, I always do the preliminary work beforehand. Well, we didn't announce our marriage until a couple of days ago. I see. Now, about the feather. There's no feather. I rather think there is. Isn't there, Ruby? Yeah, blame right there is, wise guy. In your hat. And you're talking through that. In other words, you won't talk, huh? We've got nothing to say. Now or ever. Flyer Sampson died by accident. And if you happen to find out he was murdered, we didn't have anything to do with it. 
Isn't that the way you feel too, Barker? Sure he does. Barker? Yeah. Now, that's the way I feel about it. Very well. I realize I can't force you to tell me about the feather yet. But I'll be around. Sure. <laughs> I'll be around. Go on. Parker. Baby, you shouldn't have talked to him like that. It's gone. The feather isn't in Flyer's dressing room any place. Are you sure? I searched the whole place. It isn't in there. And it wasn't on Flyer when, when it happened. He, he couldn't have destroyed it. Oh, we both begged him not to, but he might have. Yeah. He laughed at us when we told him what Harold Jolla said. Told us we were a couple of superstitious fools. Yeah, I remember. Oh, but he finally promised to wear the feather just to please us. Well, he didn't. And now that what Harold Jolla predicted has happened. Harold Jolla's predictions always happen. Harold Jolla? How did you get in here? <laughs> You've always taken me for a fraud. <laughs> There's but one entrance to this room. But you didn't come in that way. <laughs> no, I didn't, did I? How observing you are, Ruby. What do you want? Why, I... I just thought I should speak to you as a friendly gesture. Speak to us about what? About the white feather, the spots of blood. Well? It's a pity that Flyer Samson ignored my warning. But... The copper is right. Flyer was murdered. To the contrary. You saw him misjudge his distance, brush the trapeze rope with his shoulder and become twisted in its coils. Because he wasn't wearing the feather. Yes, exactly. Because he refused to take my warning. I told the three of you, wear the white feather of a baby swan spotted with the blood of a dove, lest a horrible fate overtake you. He did say that, Barker. Flyer Samson only laughed. Even when I gave him the feather for his own protection, he laughed. But he took it because I compelled him to. But the feather is in his dressing room. Oh, where is it? I have it. You? Yes. Here, you see. Where did you get it? Fly from Flyer Samson, naturally. He gave it back to you? Oh, no. I gave the matter much thought. I disliked his laughing at me. I told him what I saw in his future. I told him that he, and you, Barker, and Ruby, all have the same fate, death by hanging. And that fate can only be avoided by wearing a white feather of a baby swan, spotted with the blood of a dove. How did you get the feather back? I took it back. Took it back? Yes. Flyer Samson was a fool. He wouldn't believe me. Called me a fraud. <laughs> he said he wasn't superstitious. <laughs> you stole the feather from Flyer. You knew he'd die if he didn't wear that feather. Certainly. I saw it in his future. Just as I've seen it in yours and Ruby's. You killed him. He killed himself. No, you did. You knew he'd die if you took the feather. Parker. He laughed at me. I do not like being laughed at. Oh, you dirty rat. Sir Parker! You killed him just as sure as if you strung him up yourself. Parker, that knife! Don't come any closer with your knife, Barker. No, Barker, no, no! I always knew you were a rat. I regret it if you kill me. I've never regretted killing a snake in my life. Keep back. Keep back. Barker, no! Flyer wasn't wearing his feather because, because he stole it from him. Revenge himself because Flyer wasn't superstitious. Barker, he's dead. Yeah, no loss. Oh, why did you do it? He had it coming. Flyer Samson was the best man in the business. But that cop, he's still hanging around someplace. We gotta beat it. Where to? I don't know. Anywhere, but we gotta beat it. I'll go with you. Go pack your things. No time for that, Barker. That cop may be back any minute now. I, I guess I lost my head. Seeing him standing there, holding Flyer's feather. Oh, come on. Got any dough? Yeah, a couple of hundred. I've got 50. Thank heavens I've got it with me. Come on, we've got to get ahead of that car. Oh, 
Barker, we shouldn't have taken this plane. Yeah, it's the fastest way to cover a long distance. I know, but so much money. You want to get away, don't you? Uh, of course. But what are we going to do when the cash runs out? Now we get a job. Mm, uh, walking tight wires and swinging from tent tops, I suppose. Now we go to Europe. Sure, on 300 bucks. Stop worrying, will you? You give me the willies. Oh, if you just use your head. I'll start that I told you so business, and so help me, I'll make you wish you'd kept your trap shut. All right. All right. Well, what are your plans when we get to Frisco? Yeah, we'll hide out in a cheap room in the house. Keep indoors most of the time. Mm, I'm going to enjoy this. Well, you didn't have to come along. Well, maybe I'd be better off if I hadn't. Come on now, baby. Take it easy. I didn't mean it. I just never been on the lam before. Well, I have, and I don't like it. Yeah, there's the airport. Yeah, we're on the grounds. Mm, better hop a cab as soon as we can. Right. Now, here we are. Barker. What, baby? Look out this window. Careful, he'll see you. Who'll see me? Look for yourself. That cop, Gilfoyle. How did he get here ahead of us? Yeah, how? He's watching for us to get off the plane. Oh, what are we going to do? He'll never get me. Barker, think of something. Easy, baby. Pilot just stepped out of the cabin. What are you going to do? You just wait and see. All right, brother. This is a gun in your ribs. Now get back there at those controls and see how fast you can get this plane into the air again. Ruby. Ruby. Ruby, wake up. Oh, oh, oh Barker. Oh, you frightened me. Quick, the fire escape. What? I saw him. Who? Gilfoyle, the cop. He see you? Yeah, I think so. Come on, leave everything. You got the dough? What's left? And come on, down the fire escape. Get the window open. Uh, hurry now, out the window. Parker, look down below. Go up, Ruby. They haven't spotted us yet. Half a dozen cops down there. Yeah. How oh, did that smart cop get on our trail? Yeah, I don't know. Six weeks on the run and he's still right behind us. Come on, baby. Here's the rooftop. Parker. Come on, come on. Parker, I forgot the feather. Oh, come on, come on. There's no time for that. I've got to go back and get it. No, no, no. I haven't got time. Besides, Harajal is dead. Nothing can happen to us now. Oh, oh, Barker. Come on, baby. Hurry. Along these roofs until we can find a place to get out. Barker. I'm sorry. Well, take it easy. They won't get us. Hunted like this. Always hiding. Now, this way, Ruby. Over here. I should have brought that feather. You know what Harajal said. Ah, uh, he's dead. The spell's broken. It wasn't a spell. It was something he read in our future. He said that because you and I and Flyer Samson were born on the same day that... Oh, I have to jump here. Uh, one building to the other. Uh, just a couple of feet. Here. I'll go first. There. Uh, come on, Ruby. Just a couple of feet. All right. But it's so dark. Can you see me all right? Yes. Well, Barker, maybe there's still time to get the feather. Nuts. Just because Flyer Samson got his neck caught in that trapeze is no sign we're going to end up the same way. Come on now. All right. Now, just give a good jump. Yeah, that's it. Ruby! <laughs> Lord, those wires around her neck. Ruby! What's this? Someone's been in my room. Someone searched it. That cop. Yeah, that filthy copper. He's tailing me. I gotta get out. Gotta get out of here. Hop a freight. Yeah, that's it. I gotta get out before it's too late. Car, open door. I made it just in time. Let it close the door. Yeah, now. Yeah, it's safe now. No one followed me. I'm sure of that. 
tired. I've been from that copper. Better find a place I can lie down. Rest. Yeah, that's what I need. Yeah, lucky to find an open box car with no one in it. But there is someone, Barker. Who's that? Don't you recognize my voice? It's so dark in here. You remember, Barker? Who are you? Who are you, I say? I've got a gun. Then why don't you use it? Yeah, I will. <laughs> you couldn't miss in this small place, could you, Barker? Who are you? What kept me from hitting you? Your knife was more effective, remember? Well, the Jala. Do you have the white feather, Barker? Oh, the Jala. No, no. Give me the feather. No, no, anything but that. I gave it to you once. I want it back again. No. Then perhaps I can convince you. No, no, keep away from me. Don't touch me. You can't see me, can you, Barker? No, no, keep away. There. You feel me? <gasps> now, hand me the feather. Here. Thank you, Barker. Now, I have all three of them. Let go of me. I'm getting out of here. Are you going to jump, Barker? Keep away. Keep away from me. We're picking up speed. Keep away. Don't touch me again. We'll soon be moving too fast for you to jump. You better do it now. Yeah, yeah, I will. You don't want to stay here with me, do you, Barker? No. Oh, you got the others. You'll never get me. <laughs> you did jump. Poor Barker. <laughs> and how pretty you look hanging back there <laughs> on that male hook. Superstition Be Hanged, the 17th tale of dark fantasy by Scott Bishop, originating in the studios of WKY. Ben Morris was heard tonight as Barker, Hermé Ray played Ruby, Garland Moss was the fortune teller, and Muriel Schofield was Detective Kurt Guilfoyle. Next Friday at the same time, listen to Scott Bishop's 18th story in this dark fantasy series. Pennsylvania Turnpike, the weird and exciting tale of an aged hitchhiker who, strangely enough, refused to accept a ride in any car which did not have a person with red hair as an occupant. Tom Paxton speaking, Dark Fantasy comes to you from Oklahoma City. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>